Middle East. The U.S. Empire and the colonial state of Israel are two terrorist entities. When people tell you that it's been a year and nothing has changed, we tell them it's been a year and the imperialists have not won. My name is Morgan and I'm one of hundreds of thousands of Jewish anti-Zionists who are outraged and horrified at Israel's continued genocidal escalation and uh, who reject not just this particular genocide but the whole 76 years of colonization that it stems from. And um, I am one of so many people who said don't use us, not in our names. Don't use our identities, don't use our holidays, don't use our religion, don't use our histories as a justification for colonialism or occupation or apartheid. Not in our name, not another bomb. And we demand that if the U.S. stop arming Israel. That's our demand, stop arming Israel. U.S. labor has a proud tradition of internationalism, of working together, of, uh, of uh, <coughs> solidarity across borders between all working people. I think Americans have become clear and their unions that the genocidal plans of the United States ruling class don't serve us in any way. It's our children that go to die. It's money that could be invested in our jobs and our health care and our well-being that's being directed to fund um, the destruction of Gaza, of all of Palestine and of Lebanon. And I think really significantly we saw in July six major uh, locals and international unions take a stand against this war to advance demands of an arms embargo, to apply political pressure. Um, and to continue joining with the movement. And in fact, we've seen many of them speak at protests, various shut it down protests, labor leaders, large contingents of working people and union members. Um, and this comes at a crucial time in American labor as well, where strikes, which were at a historic low until a couple of years ago, have returned. Recently, we saw a powerful strike by the ILA, International Longshore Association, which won huge wage increases, 62%. Um, we've seen increasing organization, particularly amongst youth. And I want to emphasize, and I'll close with the point, that some of those youth that come here, like members of the Starbucks Workers United, have understood that when the social movements are strong, when the movement for Palestine is strong, when all of us are sort of fighting together and developing mass pressure on the American ruling class and its allies and its plans for us is when we get stronger as a labor movement as well. It's led to wins on the shop floor in terms of wages and benefits, and it's led to increased organizing. One year into the genocide, one year into the resistance, Filipinos remain committed to fight alongside the, Philippine, the, the Palestinian solidarity resistance. Now more than ever, it's more important that we create international solidarity across the globe. That includes Asia Pacific. That's why we're marching with Notatol, uh, Koreans, um, and that's why Filipinos continue to fight um, to make sure that uh, the Philippines is not uh, another Ukraine for the United States. That we that we it won't be a place uh, for a, uh, the United States proxy war, um, and we want to make sure. And we're marching here today because we are continuing a decades-long tradition of being solidarity with the Palestinian Liberation Movement. We're here and we're in solidarity with the Palestinian struggle, uh, of course, because we have so many similarities in our struggles. And right now, we're seeing um, an axis of resistance in the world uh, between Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, and. Of course, North Korea, 
Cuba, Venezuela. And at this moment, it's really important that we start to shift the narrative that this axis of resistance is fighting against these imperialist nations, against the Zionist entity, and we're fighting for a liberation for all oppressed people. And that means people that are under the foot, under the chokehold of imperialism, Western imperialism in the world at the moment. As an artist, you see hundreds of thousands of hundreds of thousands of artists across the country not only adorn and embellish the movement on the streets with placards with signs with banners with beautiful objects but you see artists charge their work politically and make sure that they stand on the right side of history in this moment and i think that it is one of the most politically active moments for artists and it's something that i've never seen in my life and i think that artists cultural workers Fighters will continue to do that. We'll continue to fight and we'll continue to make sure that we aid in uh, supporting the Palestinian resistance and molding public consciousness towards the right side of history and towards the big bend of arc of justice of history. So we're a group of city workers across agencies who came together last October um, after the genocide of Palestine to say that we won't stay silent while Eric Adams and his administration expresses their unequivocal support for the state of Israel. Um, we know that we're the workers who run the city, so we're, we have the power to hold our institutions accountable for their complicity in this genocide. Um, and so one of the ways that we've been uniting um, in the fight for Palestinian liberation is we've been calling on our union to sign on to our petition to get our public pension divested from Israeli securities. Uh, our public pension is nicer, it's the biggest public pension system in the country. It holds over $115 million in Israeli bonds that go to fund its military might, it goes to fund chemical warfare, Elbite systems, it goes to fund um, development, illegal settlements, um, all of the things that are making life unlivable for the Palestinian people. It's super critical for educators to be out and raising awareness about the things that are happening around the world. I think students need to have, need to be armed with critical thinking skills so they can arrive at their own conclusions. And one of the things that we need to do as educators is mass education to kind of cover the things that, um, that get left out of the mainstream media, that get left out of the textbooks. We cannot allow the narrative to continue that states that an occupied people do not have the right to resist because that is how this country was allegedly founded. That is how people like me got our ability to even show up in the world, right? It was the mass movement of the African-Americans um, during the civil rights movement and the black power movement in the 60s that allowed anybody to have the rights that we see today. A year into this genocide and a year into the resistance of New Yorkers, of years to the resistance of students. I could only say that our student movement is getting stronger and stronger, it's getting more wise, and it's getting more allies. Even though the our even though our administrations keep attacking us, keep trying to, you know, deport us, keep trying to suspend us, to expel us, we keep learning lessons in our struggle. We keep learning that nothing will slow our movement down and that we are only becoming more wise.